thought this is the crucial revolution and COVID is critical because this is what convinces people to accept, to legitimize total biometric surveillance. If we want to stop this epidemic, we need not just to monitor people, we need to monitor what's happening under their skin. What we have seen so far, it's corporations and governments collecting data about where we go, who we meet, what movies we watch. The next phase is the surveillance going under our skin. We now see mass surveillance systems established even in democratic countries, which previously rejected them. And we also see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously, surveillance was mainly above the skin. Now it's going under the skin. Governments want to know not just where we go or who we meet, above all, they want to know what is happening under our skin. What's our body temperature? What's our blood pressure? What, what is our medical condition? Now humans are developing even bigger powers than ever before. We are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring, for instance, the, the power to re-engineer life. Humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. I know that in recent years, we saw populist politicians undermining deliberately the trust that people have in important institutions like universities, like respectable media outlets. These populist politicians told people that, say, scientists are this small elite, disconnected from the real people. You shouldn't believe them. And you had all these conspiracy theories that climate change is just a hoax, it's not real, and that the earth is actually flat, and that vaccination are bad for you, and this spread. But I don't think it's too late. Especially in an emergency, people can change their views very fast, and they can discover hidden reservoirs of trust. You look in this crisis, who do people trust? They trust scientists above everything else in, in all countries. In Israel, they close down the synagogues. In Iran, they close the mosques. Churches all over the world are telling people don't come to church. The Pope is doing all these ceremonies on, 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 on Zoom or YouTube. And why do they do all this? Because the scientists recommended it. Even the religious leaders have trust in the scientists. Yeah. And the easiest people to manipulate people are the people like who believe in free will. <laughs> because you manipulate them and they don't even suspect because, hey, I chose it because this, this is my free will. We need some kind of global loyalty and global identity. Earth will be populated or even dominated by entities that are not organic, that they don't breathe, they don't have emotions. Like, the, the potential of AI is much, much bigger than any historical revolution. It's really a biological revolution. There is no such thing as free will. And now if you give the tools to start changing or overcoming biology, just, you know, think about sex life. Mm -hmm. Almost every religion and every ideology wanted to really change uh, human sexuality or limit it, but they couldn't. You had vows of chastity in the church, and how many people actually lived up to their vows of chastity? Now think, if you can really start messing with human biology, what will be the result of these sexual fantasies of different religions and ideologies? Then the big political and economic question of the 21st century will be what do we need humans for? Or at least, what do we need so many humans for? Do you have an answer in the book? Um, at present, the best guess we have is uh, keep them happy with drugs and computer games. An algorithm is able 
to take into account thousands and thousands of data points, each with a very small weight. And if you ask why the algorithm rejected my request for a loan, so the bank can print out millions of pages of, of data and tell you, that's why. The algorithm went over all this and calculated that you are not creditworthy. And our minds just can't understand this type of decision-making. And it can be on a personal level, it can also be on the level of an entire country that to decide whether to raise or lower interest rate, for example. It will not be done by a human banker or finance minister. It will be done by an AI. Already today, how many people really understand the financial system? I guess less than 1% of people really understand finance. In 20 years, the number of people who will be able to understand the global financial system will be exactly zero. Good evening, Mr. Harari, and thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us tonight. My question indeed is a bit more personal. You've called yourself a prophet tonight, mm. or you, you use the I, word... I you repeatedly the word deny yeah, well. that... Uh... <laughs> How do you feel being so influential? I mean, it, it, it has happened probably in the last few years, no? Oh uh, yeah, just again... I mean, I, I'm interested in... in oh, sorry, you, you have power somehow to... to convince leaders? How are you yourself? So I, I now have an, a, a team that is helping me deal with that. It's impossible to deal with such a thing just on just one person. So mm -hmm. people th see me and they think I'm doing everything. I actually do very little. And the people who really work hard are my team members who uh -huh. organize this and, and, and everything. I'll send you a CV. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, uh,